Hi, this is Rachel from Ray K Books, and today I'm talking with the author Kendara Blake. This is the second interview I'm doing with her. So, hello, Kendara. Hello, Rachel. So, today we are going to be promoting Mortal Gods, which is part of your anti goddess series. So, can you please tell the viewers what anti goddess is about and the series as a whole? Uh, sure. So, Antigodis is kind of a, it's a Greek mythology adventure, and the premise is the Greek gods, ever since Olympus fell, ever since they got booted out, they've been living among us, just on the fringe, doing their own thing. Would have been totally happy to do that forever, except that one day they wake up and discover that they are each dying, kind of these weird, disgusting deaths that seem to be uh, linked to whatever kind of god they are. So Athena, for instance, her sacred bird is the owl. She discovers that owl feathers are kind of invading her lungs and invading her body like little tumors and they kind of work their way to the surface and then she's got to rip them out and they leave all these disgusting sores and they're under her fingernails and she's got to rip them out of her tongue and out of the roof of her mouth. And so, I mean, that's really unpleasant for her, but also just being an immortal, it, it tends to piss you off if you're not immortal anymore, or at least I would imagine. And she sets off on this quest with her kid brother Hermes to try to find out why it's happening and discovers that the other gods have actually entered into kind of a, they've got it into their heads that if they can kill off the other side of, of gods, that the side that's left standing Will, will survive, kind of like um, the Titans did to eat their children. They're kind of doing the same thing, just grasping at straws. And along the way, they find um, reincar well, teenagers who don't realize that they're actually reincarnated heroes from the Greek mythology past, Achilles, Hector, Cassandra, Odysseus, and then, you know, chaos ensues. So... My first question is, if you had a chance to be immortal, would you take it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, it would depend. There's only one kind of mortality, immortality that I've ever seen like depicted that would suck so bad. And that's, did you ever see that old movie, Death Becomes Her? No. It's, you kind of... You stop aging wherever you are, but you also reverse aging back to where you looked your best and even better than you did at your best. And then you're immortal. Like, you don't age anymore. But the downside is, is you have to take super good care of yourself because if you die or if you break an arm, you don't really heal either. So, like, if you have your head chopped off, in, like, I don't know, a guillotine, I guess, would be a common head chopping thing then uh -huh. your head and your body stays alive. Are you talking about um, are you talking about the one with Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn? Yeah. 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 Like that that immortality sucks because you'd never be able to keep yourself safe. Like I'd be the one who was like, oh tra la la, I'm immortal now, and then I go get hit by a bus and it would just instantly suck. But um all the other kinds of immortality, as long as that doesn't happen, you know, like you're immortal and you're also invincible, why not? Whoever says they wouldn't just trying to sell you something. I wouldn't. I'm glad I have an expiration date. <laughs> well, you could still, like, oh, that's the other thing. Like, I think I would want to be immortal with the option to kill myself whenever yeah. <laughs> I get over. I think that's like, a good yeah. yeah, I like that. Like, once you're like, okay, I've lived 500 years, I'm good. I'm good, and then you just like, yeah. Any perfect. Like, yeah, like, oh, like, mm, it's 500 years in the future, everything is lame now. But that'd be such a big decision still, because you're like, well, in another 500, it could get really cool. Should I just put up with it? I mean, you probably would end up never killing yourself, but, but hey. Well, did you know that there is, uh, okay, I'm not, like, this is what I heard, and it's on the internet, so just take it with a grain of salt. Um, right. But they... Figured that scientists figured out a way to elongate a, um, a mouse's life. So I read that too. Yeah, it can happen to humans. So the so they're guessing that the person already that was just born or already born is going to figure out how to make people live longer. 
You know, crazy. See, on mass, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> like, there's so many of us already. I don't know if we're all just, you know, if humans suddenly had like a 400-year life expectancy, I think we'd be more horrible. I think so, too. Well, not but only that, the older ones would be cool, but they'd still be super old. So all like these young jerks were like, huh, I've still got 300 years. They'd just be, you know, young, stupid 100-year-olds well, it's not running just, around. Let's also remember that there's dementia. There's, you know, like loss of, you kind of like lose yourself when you get older. So that's what I have to wonder. Like, do you really want to live to your 300? Like, what's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? That's true. Like, I guess when you think about living to 300, you just think like the aging process should be slowed enough yeah. that dementia wouldn't happen to you. That's a but good point. Maybe it would happen to you, and then you just have to live with it for longer, which that's just sad. That's true. Yeah. Though. You you want to see like if if you were to elongate your life, then the aging process has to process has to be slower. So I'm gonna be like 25 for like 20 years. That'd be great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I guess you know you would take that kind of life if you could be 25 for 20 years, and then like 26 for another 20 years. And then as soon as you hit, like, you know, 90 and you're starting to lose it, and you're just like, well, I could live out this 20 years at 90, or I could just kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, I like that. We're on the same wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That was, that was my first question. That took, like, five minutes. <laughs> to answer. Uh, so my second one is... Um, why did you choose the Greeks over the Romans? Uh, that's just a personal preference. Um, I've never, this might sound stupid, but I've never liked the Roman names for the gods, like Mars and Minerva and, you know, Venus. They're, they're planets, man. We've bogarted them. So to me, when I think of the gods, I, I think of them with their Greek names, and that was more that over anything. Also, um, it was the Greek tradition that I was trying to follow with the Iliad and the Odyssey, not the Roman tradition with the Aeneid, which I don't like at all. So, so who is your favorite Greek god and goddess's story? Like, out of all the stories that happened? Out of all the stories that happened? I mean, I love the Iliad. It's hands down my favorite. And if you carry that through into the Odyssey, then, I mean, I really love Athena's, um, Athena's role in the Odyssey with Odysseus. Um, but the gods themselves, most, so many of their stories are just terrible. You know, they're just huge jackasses. Like, how Zeus is always, I don't know why he feels the need that he has to turn into animals to go bone women, because I feel like that'd be counterproductive that you should just show up as, like, the hot king of the gods and that do it for you, but he decides to be a swan to bone, which is weird, or, yeah. So a lot of my favorite ones, like Zeus turning into a swan to impregnate Leda with um, Helen and Clytemnestra is one of my favorites just because it's so bizarre and disgusting. Mm -hmm. So but, when, you, when you watch the Disney Hercules... Yeah. Come on. Like, he's, no. he's like this bad, the, Zeus is like a, a great dad. Well, let's yeah. be honest. Let's be honest. And he's got like, he's got like that little beard that looks like a cloud. It's, he's so cute. But, um. He's not a good The person. whole time that I was watching Hercules, the, and, you know, Princess Megara and everything, all I could think of was, hey, someday Hercules is going to go insane and murder you and all your children. Right? Have fun. Oh my god, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, you you fall in love and it's a happily ever after, but you're going to kill her and your children. And your children. It's like, run away, Megara. <laughs> it's like one of those things where, you know, like you, uh, Ariel in the original story from The Little Mermaid, like, turns into a sea sponge or something like that. It's the same thing. Like, right, did, yeah. <laughs> All those, um, I, I think I heard about a project 
to turn the like to put the horror and the gore back into the Grimm's fairy tales. I'm very interested in that because Me they, they are they're so disturbing and, and bloody, and they've been so distilled, you know, for the children. But the adults would enjoy a little bit more of Cinderella's sisters cutting their feet and toes off. So. Yeah, I wouldn't, but you're a horror person, so that's what you write uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, that's your thing. But I think that would be very interesting. Do you, is Disney going to do that? Oh, I, I, I would seriously doubt it. I don't remember. I kind of like, you know, it's you're browsing on the Internet, and you see something, and you're like, oh, interesting, and then you just pass by it. So I didn't actually read the article it was associated with. I should. I'll Google it later. Yeah. All right, so we are now going to switch over and play a Would You Rather game. Gotcha. So, if people don't know what Would You Rather is, I'm going to tell you. And that is, I'm going to ask Kendara here, would you rather eat apples or oranges for the rest of your life? And she's going to have to say either apples or oranges. Uh, except this is literature edition. So it's all going to be about books. Oh, I forgot to ask you pre-questions. <laughs> so if you have not read these books, just say so, and we'll go on to another um, question. I'm sorry. In okay. Okay, would you rather live in the world of Hunger Games or Divergent? Hunger Games. Would you rather fight next to Hermione from Harry Potter, Katniss from the Hunger Games, or Triss from Divergent? Uh, that depends on... Um, what we're fighting. Um, my instinct just says Hermione because since she was always solving Harry's problems, I think she'd just go ahead and solve mine too. Uh, but, you know, she doesn't have that much experience over some kind of evil dystopic regime. So, but, you know, evil dystopic regimes don't usually have magic. So, still, Hermione, definitely. In all situations, even against dinosaurs. <laughs> I agree. Magic stumps yeah. a arrow sometimes, you know. Right. And uh, she doesn't mess hers up, so it's not like I'm going to get Ron. That's true. Yeah. Ron is like the slow one of the trio. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it didn't help that, you know, his wand got broken that one time. and But still, yeah, he's definitely even, even when he's on, he's off. Like in the movie, when he had that, um, Really good idea. Hermione's, Hermione's like, that's a really good idea, Ron. Good job. <laughs> yeah, like, no shit. Did you think of that? I did, yeah. all by myself. <laughs> all right. The next one is, would you rather read a book that is written poorly but has an excellent story or read one with weak content but is written well? Sweet content written well. Would you rather? Uh, who would you rather have as a child? Harry Potter or Hermione Granger? Oh, like as a child? Oh, I don't know. To be honest, they would both be horrible children. <laughs> Harry Potter would get me murdered. Like he would get me straight up murdered. Nobody can be a guardian to that kid without getting murdered in the face. But Hermione, little brat, she would erase all my memories eventually. So what was the point? It's like I wasted all these years raising your ass, and then one day you're just like, blah, 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 gotta go fight a war, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for the 12, 16 years. No. She goes, she, I, I heard that she goes back and she finds her parents. Even so. In the books. That's like a violation of my brain. Why not just like here? Because she two did it to she Bermuda. Did. Enjoy. I'm a good daughter. No. Well, yeah. That's true. That's true. But yeah. then again, oh. Death Eaters could come and torture them if they had. That's true. I think that's why she did could. it. I mean, it's not like they don't know. Like, they could have just come just to be vindictive, not like they were thinking they'd get any information, but just like, ah, this is the Granger girl's parents. We're just going to kill them for fun because they're Death Eaters. They do that. So if I had to have anybody from the Harry Potter universe as a child, like as my child, 
it would be serious because then I'd get a kid and a dog. I'd get a kid dog. Get <laughs> a kid dog. Be both. And it'd be wonderful. It'd be like, oh, I'm tired of you smelting off right now. Why don't you go be a dog for a while and we'll go to the park. And it'd be Don't fun. forget don't forget that you also have a cousin that's freaking crazy. What Helen Bogard, what's her name? The well, Deathy. <laughs> I, I would have adopted him, so they wouldn't be my <laughs> relatives. They would be, you know, there would be all these restraining orders and everything. Like, he would be, he, I'd change his name so nobody knew. He'd be, like, protective services. He did have a really shitty uh, background, so you'd just be like, I hate you. Yeah. And then you'd shake him. Right. I see it. Right. I think, I don't think right. we have a problem with that. So, yeah. Sorry, you kind of you kind of um, froze a little bit. Oh, okay. sorry. The next one Good. is yeah. Okay, the next one is um, would you rather write novels where all the characters are women or all men for the rest of your writing career? Oh. All of them? Like, all of the characters. A hundred percent. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I think I'd quit. Like, <laughs> I would say... I would. I think I would just quit. That just sounds like, for the rest of your writing career, that's you know, hopefully that's a relatively long time, and 100% cast of chicks, 100% cast of dudes, I'd probably get through one book of either one and just be ready to kill all chicks and all dudes. So, why not? Know. Just kill them. Really, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, I guess. I guess. And then, but, you know, then I could just all write right. books about animals. So... Well, I mean, I guess, yeah, that would work. I was going to say, well, maybe you have to write them only girl and boy animals, but I don't think that matters because they're animals. I think that matters um, less. I think animals have less gender problems than we do. Yeah. And then the next one is, would you rather only write your books in trilogies or standalones? Okay, I'm in the middle of a trilogy right now. Essentially, it's it's already written, but I mean, it was hard. Um, it was nice on the on the hand that you get to spend more time with the characters, and it it would always be nice to be able to have characters that you can go back to. Uh, like if if Kaz from Anna was just to be like the the detective character in a series of standalone books, I I would enjoy doing that. But having a trilogy where one story arc is essentially broken up into three pieces, I, I, I would not want to do that forever. So, standalones. Maybe standalones with recurrent characters, but standalones. Perfect. Um, the next one is... Would you rather write a book without using conjunctions or have, re have every sentence of your book begin with one? Without. <laughs> without. Having every book begin with one sounds really difficult. Would you rather write a plot twist you hated or write a character you hated? A character I hated. Would you rather a super successful movie made from one of your books or a long-lasting television series? Um, I don't know. Both sound really cool. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, can't quibble about that. Either one would be great. Movie. What? Sure. Movie. movie. Would you rather critics rip your book apart publicly or never talk about it at all? Depends on the ripping. 
Like it really depends on the ripping. If they're ripping on it for an aspect of like the story or its makeup, then I guess I'd rather have them rip it. But if they're just like, wow, she sucks so bad. <laughs> she should never write another word ever again. Then maybe not talk about it at all. I don't think critics would do that. Do they do like, that? Did she go to school anywhere? I think that I'd, I'd rather just have them not say that. That's terrible. Has that happened to you? No. Oh, no. No. At least not to my knowledge, not that I've seen. And I, I do try to keep up on the reviews pretty, um, pretty diligently. So that comes to my uh, next... Well, first off, that, that's the end of Would You Rather, so congratulations. Did very well. Thanks. Yay. Um, so my next one is, do you read bad reviews of your book? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I read all, I, I try to read all reviews. I mean, I don't get to all of them, but I, I read a lot of the reviews. Good, bad, in the middle. All good. Great. Lovely. So you and some of the really like some of the really bad ones. Um, there was this feature going around. There was a video feature. I think uh, Wendy Darling was doing it, and it was like like Have you seen Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets? Yeah. Where celebrities read the mean tweets. They were gonna uh, organize something like that where authors read mean reviews, like their favorite lines from their mean reviews. And so I went through and I found like my favorite, like hilarious lines from all these one star reviews. And then I just never got around to recording them. So like somewhere on my computer there is there is just a fabulous page of great one liners just trashing my books and I I never got around to, to recording them. It would have been really fun. Wow. I wonder <laughs> how many authors participated. Uh, I didn't hear. Um, I think they got quite a few to do it and I'm sure it was really fun. I I should check that out because I would like to hear and see everybody else's delivery. I'm sure it's really funny. Oh my god. I should have done that myself. I should have thought of that. <laughs> Ow! Okay, anyway. Um, uh, I was gonna say something about that. Okay, so you're saying that like bad reviews don't hurt your feelings at all? No, not, like, I will, like, I'm not going to lie and say that some of them don't make me, like, rip-roaringly angry for a solid five minutes. And then, you know, I get over it. It's like, either I get over it or I'm just like, okay, I'm over it. Or I get over it where I'm like, I see where you're coming from, you know. It's, it's, it's one of the two reactions. But, yeah, doesn't, no, they don't bother me. So let's talk about what's coming up in your in your uh, books. So you're finishing the trilogy. Is there anything yes. after that that you're thinking of or about to write? Uh, well, it's already sold, actually. Um, so Ungodly is the third and... Oh, here's Tybalt. Hello, Tybalt. He's stretching. He says, hello, Rachel. Oh, <laughs> um, cute. The Ungodly is the third book in the Goddess War series, and that should come out next fall. And then the next series starts in 2016. Uh, it's coming out from Harper Teen. It is called, the first book is called Three Dark Crowns, and it is a dark fantasy um, where, uh, I haven't talked about it a lot, so I don't have like a, but it's, it's, so it's set on this island, and kind of like outside of time, and it's, this island has always been ruled by queens. One queen, and on this island, um, there are lots of different types of people, so you can be um, a naturist, who can make things grow, and like ripen the crops, and uh, communicate with animals, and you usually have like a, an animal familiar, like a dog or a bird, um, if you're a common, and the stronger you're familiar, kind of the stronger your naturist gifts. Um, the strongest naturist queens have like wolves and 
you know, like lions. Um, or you can be an elemental, so you control the weather. Uh, you can bring storms, you can bring the rain. Uh, also, you control just water, earth, air, fire. Um, I would love that so much. <laughs> you can be um, a telekinetic, also called war queens, because telekinetics can move things with their mind, and they are also extremely talented soldiers and fighters. So their reigns, when you have a war queen, it's usually pretty bloody and pretty short, but nobody messes with you. And um, Or you can be a poisoner. So poisoners are expert assassins. They are immune to every toxin, and the strongest poisoner queens will have poison blood. So the queens are stronger, stronger than the common folk, and it's kind of like a beehive where if you know bees, like the queen bee will suddenly decide, um, oh, it's time to lay my queens, and she'll usually lay three or four queen eggs, and um, the queen eggs hatch, and then they you know, kill each other, and whoever is the strongest queen becomes the new queen of the hive. So that's kind of like where the idea came from, and uh, so this queen will have triplet daughters, usually. Very seldom will she have more, but triplet daughters, and each daughter will show a particular gift. Naturist, poisoner, elemental, telekinetic. Um, there are also some other types that I'm not going into here. But unfortunately for them, there's only one queen. So as they come of age, one of them's got to kill the other two. Do yeah. they fight it? Fight it yeah, out? they got to kill each other. That's unfortunate. Got to kill your sister. Oh, so sad. Well... That's a little dark. Well, you did say yeah. dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a dark fantasy. It's called Three Dark Crowns, so it's yeah. It's 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 going to be pretty dark, but it's also I think um, it's pretty fun. I had a I had a lot of fun developing the the different factions. You know, the naturists are kind of one camp, and the poisoners are another camp. And the poisoners have been in power for a long time, so they're kind of like, you know, they really want to stay in power, but everybody else is kind of tired of having them around, so. So, whose, whose point of view is this? Is it the three sisters' point of view? Um, yes, and also um, one of the sisters, the, the naturist faction sister um, has a best friend who's also an extremely strong naturist, and so you get some of her point of view also. But yeah, it's, it's the three sisters. And the three sisters are um, naturist, elemental, and poisoner. So out of these, which one would you want to be? <laughs> oh, you know, like it sounds cool to be, you know, like an elementalist, so you can like, you know, wrap fire around your fists and everything and throw it at people. But I am such, I'm such an animal person that I would really, really want a familiar. Like I would really want one. And it'd be my luck that I'd get like a really lame one, like a tarantula or something. <laughs> like, oh crap! Here's my tarantula forever. Uh -huh. But uh, I'd probably be a naturist. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I would love elemental. I mean, I have daydreams about just like flying. It's awesome <laughs> here. Element. Anyway, okay. So that comes out 2016. And this is the first time that you're published uh, at not Macmillan, right? Yeah, not um, yeah, yeah. This is my first non non Tortine book, which is really sad because I love I love Tortine. They're awesome. But okay, so what happened? This is what I've learned in school is that they it went through a round robin. Is that what it's called? And then they the all the publishers picked out or not bet, but put in money on what book they wanted? Is that what uh, happened? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it went to auction. Auction. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm super excited about, um, you know, uh, working with, with the new house, and everybody's been really enthusiastic, and I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, the first draft is done. It, um, it actually, it, it went to uh, the Frankfurt International Book Fair, and did pretty well there. I can't. I can't announce anything about that yet. But yeah, 
pretty excited to get back to work on it. I'll probably start working on it again around February. But that means that you're done writing the third uh, Anti-Goddess book? Yes. Ungodly just got sent back to my editor last week. After um, And that's after the first round of edits. So all we have left to do on that is um, line edits and copy edits. Unless she thinks I just really hosed it up and then we'll do one more round of edits. Right. Well, that's really cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. A new series. That's really yeah. cool. So. Uh, it, seems like a, it seems like a really long time. Um, 2016 feels like a long time, but it goes by so fast. It's, by the time it gets here, I will not be ready for it. That's all right. I'll, I'll be here. I can't wait for you to come back to New York so I can, I can actually see you. Yeah, oh, I was so bummed that we, we missed each other, but I understand. It was, it was Wesley. Elvis. Wesley from the Princess Bride. <laughs> I had to. Yeah, of course. Was it cool? Like, did you get to meet him and talk to him? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it went by really fast. There was a lot of people there. Um, but it went, it went, you couldn't really, like, stay and chat. And you couldn't take a picture on the on the podium, so you had to, like, take it way back in line. Oh. I know. That's kind of a bummer. Bummer. But um no I, I I have fun and then I also have it's so over there I also met Neil Patrick Harris. Oh nice. I wanted to meet uh Jessica Brody and Marissa Meyer who's Macmillan mm -hmm. and Neil Patrick Harris. Neil <laughs> Patrick Harris. <sighs> Which one? Which one? Uh, but uh yeah so next time next book um tour. Got to meet, girl. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so my next question, since we already talked about what's in the future, um, where do I want to go with this? How about, let's go in the past. So what made you want to write in the first place? Uh, probably just reading. Like I read like a crazy person when I was a kid. My mom read to me so much that I could read like I could read, read books and stuff before I went into kindergarten. And I didn't go to preschool or anything. That just came from her reading to me so much that eventually I just absorbed what letters and words were. Um, and that, I think that made my schooling in large part a lot easier because I didn't have to struggle with, you know, any of the reading fundamentals. It was, it was pretty easy. Um, and it seemed like the more I read, it was kind of, when books are something that you love, it's kind of like, oh, this world is neat. I wonder if I could create my own. So that's where it came from initially. Very nice. I think that's really cool. You knew the alphabet before everyone else. I don't know if I knew the alphabet per se. Like, I don't remember the actual process, but I do remember that eventually I could just read the books that we'd always read, and then I could just read different ones. Kids are sponges, you know? <laughs> I mean, I wish she taught me French back then. Well, okay, so now that you're a writer in the present day, uh, I'm guessing that your parents are just, like, over the moon, right? <laughs> uh, no, well, my dad is super proud, like, yeah. And my mom is proud, too, but I don't think she... She's not a reader. Like, I think I read it out of her. Like, she did all the reading to me when I was a kid, and she's like, F books forever. <laughs> I don't think she's read since. Um, so, no, she actually, she hasn't read any of my stuff, and that's okay. Um, but, you know, I mean, she's, she's, yeah, she's happy that I'm happy and I'm doing, you know. She's she happy, yeah. read any of your stuff? No, no, it's, uh, yeah, I, you know. Books. It's probably like leftover anger from her, me making her read the same unicorn book 500 times. <laughs> so. That could be it. Yeah, I think anger. it. I think it is. I think it is. All right. Well, congrats. I, I already said congratulations, but it's it's really cool that you're an author after all of this reading. You finally made it. Um, finally, yeah, so it is. It's great. Which one of your books? 
do you want to become a movie? Like, if you had a choice, if they're like, which one, like, you only have, like, three series. You have uh, Anna Dress and Blood, you have uh, Standalone, and you have this one, Moral Gods. So which... Right. Okay, all right. So since you asked, and since this is, like, my wish world, um, strangely enough, uh, well, Anna Dress and Blood is in development with Fickle Fish Films, and I think, so I think, and I've, I think that would be like a really fun, scary, funny, like I really like the direction that they're taking with it, so I hope to hear more news soon. Um, and there's, my first novel, Sleepwalk Society, is a contemporary, like based in America in the shadow of 9-11, and about a year ago, I got contacted by some Italian film students who wanted to do an adaptation of that for an Italian film festival. I'm like, really? This one? This is weird. How did you even get it? Um, we didn't sell, you know, there's no Italian translation. We didn't sell over there. And she's like, oh, I loved it. So as far as I know, they're planning on shooting that, just like a, a student film of it, this summer. Um, That's cool. And so, you know, that's neat. And I don't think that Anti-Goddess and the Goddess Wars could ever be adapted into um, film just because of the effects and all the locations. Um, the book travels around a lot, and the budget would, I think, get out of control. But I do think it would make, like, an, I would love to see, like, a graphic novel version of it or, or like, a, a, a scaled-down TV series. I guess, because I would love to see the special effects of, like, Poseidon with all of the seaweed growing into his skin and his skin, like, leaking out like oil and the coral that's coming through his eyes. I would love to see that stuff somewhere outside of my own head. That's never going to happen. But if I had a wish, that would be it. That'd be awesome. So Anna Dress of Blood is known as a horror thriller type book, right? Paranormal? Yep. So yeah, a horror romance, I think. Horror romance. So let let's go into the past, Twilight, and then all these paranormal, and then you know, like movies, and then Hunger Games, all these dystopian, and then fantasy. They don't have horror yet. Books into movies, do they? Well, Gone Girl. That's a thriller, um, not a horror. That's a that's a thriller, but horror books into like you know. The Shining, everything that's been made off of Stephen Young King. Young adults, I mean. Okay, young adults. Um, oh, well, Fickle Fish Films, the same company that's handling Anna, is doing Down a Dark Hall right now. Mm. The Lois Duncan, um, you know, she wrote, like, I Know What You Did Last Summer and Hotel for Dogs. <laughs> kind of two strange things to put together, Hotel for Dogs and I Know What You Did Last Summer. But um, I guess Down at Dark Hall was always one of Stephanie Meyer's favorite books. So um, they just announced a director for it a couple of months ago, Rodrigo Cortez, the guy that did Red Lights, which I saw and I thought was really atmospheric and really moody. And, and um, I think that will be really cool. And that's kind of a horror thriller. I think it's going to be more um, dark and suspenseful than it is like slasher and, and gore. But um, that's supposed to be out in, I think, 2016 and ish. I don't know. I just stalk the IMDP page every once in a while. Um, so that would count. And then if they follow it up with Anna, I mean, that would count too. So, yeah. so it's a whole new uh, genre that might be popular. It, it might be. And another cool thing about Ficklefish is the fact that they're chicks in Hollywood. They're women in Hollywood, and they are encouraging other women within Hollywood. They made Austin Land, um, you know, two female producers, uh, written a book written by a woman, directed by a woman with a largely female cast. I mean, that's 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 fantastic. And they just announced their new Twilight Stories project too, which will expand the Twilight universe and also looking for. Um, Female filmmakers, female screenwriters, uh, and I don't know. I just think that's a that's a really cool mission to have because unfortunately you don't really think about it a lot, but 
uh, the female presence, as far as creatively in Hollywood, is still underrepresented. So still have a little more, a little more lady action. So you're saying that, um, like, what part of the process is Anna dressed in blood right now for the film? Um, well, I can't, I can't really say. Like, Ficklefish handles all of the um, press releases and all of that, and I. Off the top of my head, I cannot remember what the last thing that was made public is, so I can't, I'm not going to say anything for fear of putting my foot in my mouth. But I mean, it's moving along, so yeah. But I know they're focusing on Down a Dark Hall right now. Like, I, f I think if it's not already in production, it's really close to going, and I'm really excited to see that. Um, yeah, yeah, very excited. They also optioned Mindy McGinnis is not a drop to drink. Did you read that? No. No, it's really good. It's um, uh, um, like a, it's like a post-apocalyptic, not a, not a dystopian, it's a post-apocalyptic in a world where we've run out of water and um, this girl, Lynn, has to defend this little pond, which is essentially just the source of her survival. And it's really gritty and it's really, you know, it's, it's fantastic. So they've also optioned that. So I hope, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing all their films, including well, Anna. <laughs> have we gotten to the part of the script yet? Like, can you talk about that? I, I don't think I can talk about that. <laughs> I don't I, think I can. I, I, I don't think, uh, yeah, no. But, I mean, I've, I've seen where they're going with it, and they've, they know how to adapt books and turn them into movies like they they do the adapting portion really well and um, since Stephanie is an author herself she she really cares about author input which has been neat even though I don't feel like that's not something that I would have ever demanded I, I would trust them to do whatever they felt like so I think film actually um, is is a good way to expand upon a world Anna Dressed in Blood is all from Kaz's point of view. But with a movie, you can go outside of his head and see all this other stuff that, you know, we didn't even know was happening. So that's a that's an exciting prospect. I think that's really cool that you get a uh, say in, you know, the script a little bit and you get to, you know, be a part of that process. Because I've heard other authors who are just like, I don't know what's going on. They didn't let me say anything. It's all up to them. So, do you get any say on who gets who gets cast casted? Um, the casting will be up to them, up to the production company and, and the director, um, and that's how it should. I have no idea on who. You know, people are always asking me who I see as Kaz and who I see as Anna, and I see Kaz as Kaz and Anna as Anna. That's their you know their their own people in my brain. So. Uh, I I would have no no input on that. They have they have asked, you know, like, hey, do you have any suggestions? And I'm always super not helpful. I'm like, no, I really don't. I have nothing. I'm so sorry. Um, but fans, like readers, have come forward and suggested many many things. Not just to me, but to the like the producers. Sometimes the producers will send me like, oh, one of your readers suggested this guy. And they'll send like a bunch of like glamour shots of, of the guy or the girl. Oh, interesting. But Did you know there is a um website out there, Gina Showalter, who you know Gina Showalter? Yeah, we did a panel together once. Oh you oh you did. I was there. Okay, anyway. Um so she there's this website that she went on. It's pretty cool. And what you do is fans like you put a book on it, and then you write down the characters, and then your fans cast who they think should be in that part, and then they vote on if that actually looks at, like, the character or not. So I went, there was Aunt Alice in Zombieland, and, um, yeah, so people would, like, pick people for Cole, so I could, like, thumbs up or down if I think it looked like Cole or not. It's fun. Nice. Yeah, that does sound fun. Yeah. I should go on there and try to vote for, like, yeah, like, do you know what other books are on there? Oh, no, I don't, 
Is it just, or is it just like hers? Uh, no, there's other books. I just actually didn't think about searching other ones. I just saw uh, that one. That was fun. Let's go back to Facebook. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'll I'll give it to you for sure. So we are over uh, time, but I do have one more question for you, sure. and that is. Yeah. Now that you have a way to like speak to your fans, is there anything you want to say to them? Thank you. I mean, that's it's it's um I'm extremely grateful for everyone who has given my books a shot, even if you ended up not liking them or leaving scathing reviews, I still very much appreciate that you know, in, in the world of so many books that you have uh, picked mine up and given them a whirl. So, yeah, thank you. That's great. That's awesome. I love you. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> all right. So that concludes our chat. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen, because Miss Kendara here, her lovely self is giving away three copies of Mortal Gods, which is the second book in the Anti-Goddess series. Uh, and this is going to be USA only. And in order to win, you must do a few things. The first thing is this live chat is going to become a YouTube video. So when it becomes a YouTube video, I want you to comment on that video with a way to contact you if you won. The second thing, and this is optional because not everybody has a Twitter, to follow Kendara on Twitter. And if you do that, then please put your username in the comments so I can verify the entry. And I said it was USA. Um, and then this ends next Sunday. I don't know when that is. I forgot to look at the calendar. So um, that's it. Thank you again, Kendara. This was a lot of fun. I always enjoy talking to you. Yeah, it was good to see you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.